Hey up me ducks, are you alright? A couple of years ago, I made a video about the accents of English. And quite rightly, several people got a bit mardy with me because I'd left out the East Midlands. So today, I'm going to put that right. Number one, the math vowel. One of the most striking things I found was that the vowel in math is a long central monothong. Ah, this can cause some fun. One shot, one shit pile, and three asses. Now those lads don't live in a village where there are three asses, as in bottoms, derrieres, posteriors, butts, or asses, as my fellow Americans say. Yeah, ass. We don't say house, we say ass. So with a bit of H dropping, what the rest of us call a house can end up sounding quite confusing. You have to be really careful who you invite to come and have a look at your new ass. So does this mean that East Midlanders can't tell their arse from their ass? No. So what happens is the vowel in start and palm moves further back. Mardy. The biggest part I've ever had. Part of, part of, part of. Number two, the price vowel. Some people also seem to use a long R for the vowel in price, but this seems to be less common. And people seem to avoid it when they're doing interviews or other, other situations where they're trying to speak nicely. Now, I'm not sure if this means that at some point in the past, there's been a pride, pride merger, like in some parts of North America. I tend to think not. What I think's going on is that there's a three-way contrast in terms of how far back the tongue is. So you get asked the thing you live in, ask what you put in your drink, and ask what you sit on. I happens quite like him, actually. Sand, sand. Quite like him. Oh. If you're from the East Midlands, let me know in comments which of these words sound the same to you? Number three, some background. So how come the East Midlands and West Midlands accents are so different from each other when both regions have got the word Midlands in the name? Well, it's all thanks to a very colourful Viking called Ivar the Boneless. Hey up, Ivar. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. Can someone help him up? So Ivar invaded the region in the 9th century and established the five boroughs of the Danelaw. Derby, Lincoln, Leicester, Nottingham and Stamford. So at that time, people in the East Midlands spoke Old Norse, while in the West Midlands, that was under Anglo-Saxon control and people spoke Old English. Number four, painted horses. Another feature that's quite unique to the East Midlands is the pronunciation of grammatical endings like ed and es. In most of the rest of the English-speaking world, these are pronounced id and is. But in the East Midlands, it's us and ud. Seconded. Seconded. Number five, strut and bath. As you've hopefully gathered, Banar, the East Midlands is solidly northern in terms of the pronunciation of strut and bath. Goat and face, on the other hand, have more in common with southern accents. Number six, L's. L vocalisation involves L's before other consonants or before silence turning into a kind of W. It's very fulfilling. Our local dialect. With real, real people in real... Just a small genetic mutation and I'm very grateful that I have the opportunity to... This is more commonly associated with the South East as in Essex and Estuarine accents as well as Australia, New Zealand, New York, Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. Number seven, vocabulary. I'm mostly concerned with accents rather than dialect words, but interestingly, several dialect words are still commonly used in the region. Self is sen. So all the reflexives are misen, the sen, is sen, a sen, or sens, your sen, or your sens, and the sens. Corsi is used to mean pavement or sidewalk. This comes from Norman French, cousy which in turn is cognate with modern standard French chaussée and modern standard English causeway. There's a special verb to mash, meaning to make tea in a pot. So you can say, are you mash me duck? To inquire as to whether there's any tea on the go. Which brings us to the classic term of address, me duck, which is used informally between friends and family members. Now there's lots of explanations as to where this comes from. And I think the simplest is that people are actually calling each other my duck. And that's not uncommon in varieties of English, where you get people calling each other N and goose. 
more noble explanation is that people are actually calling each other my duke, which would come from the Anglo-Norman duke, meaning duke. You can also address people as youth, as in, all right, youth, which is used to talk to young men. Much in the same way as you can say Mladoy Chilovyek in Russian and Yeshabab in Arabic. I'm really glad that people suggested I do this video about East Midlands. The reason I didn't include it in the first video is that I really didn't know much about it and I didn't want to get it wrong. So this time I've had to do lots of research and immerse myself in YouTube videos. So I'm really grateful to people who suggested names of famous people from the region that I could listen to. I really hope I've done it justice. So let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you soon. Meanwhile, you can use this video here to be going on with. Bye for now.